Welcome to another exciting episode of The Trading Bell. This week on the program, we shall be speaking to Mr. Haresh Soni. He is the chairman of Nairobi Business Ventures. And this is a very important interview because the company is literally marking a new dawn in its operations. He'll be telling us more about this as well as what lies ahead in the future for the organization. Thank you so much for making time to speak to us on The Trading Bell Show. Welcome on the program. Thank you. And uh, today marks a momentous day for the company and you have completed the restructuring process. And for many investors, for many Kenyans out there who know Nairobi Business Ventures, just let's start by telling them what the company is all about. Nairobi Business Venture, as it started as uh, the shoe retailer, uh, I think the all aware about Keshu, mm -hmm. that company was retails various outlets in Kenya. With time, it's a difficult uh, uh, retail and environment which did not sustain and the business was into the collapse then uh, we as a our group we are also looking going into the public and we got uh, they look for the investor uh, to preserve the shareholder value and mm -hmm. uh, we came in between and we injected uh, 83 million to make the capital strong base for the NBV to give a new life and we invested that and uh, in end of that we have got they have issued a 415 million new shares to make more liquidity in the market mm -hmm. for the shares so and uh, it's a milestone for uh, NBV that uh, the investor will have a confidence and they are coming up and investing the money with the new uh, NBV and a stronger NBV mm -hmm. And uh, we are more going with the infrastructure, which is the our government big four agenda. So the growth will be sustainable. I um, growth will be good, and it will be help for the every investor to get the value of that investment. All right, and uh, Mr. Sony, just help us understand uh, by you completing the restructuring. Uh, what does it mean for the company, for the investors who used to know the company? operating big in retail what will change as is began with the retail business now we are going into the uh, semi raw material supply mm -hmm. raw material is every manufacturer quite a lot raw material has to be imported from overseas we are coming as a trading house as an nbv to support those manufacturer who are producing end product like steel cement many other manufacturing they have to have to import. We have an expertise. We are into the. We have an expertise in the ma manufacturing, mm -hmm. as well as the logistic, which help them to make easy business uh, environment. Mm -hmm. So we'll support all the manufacturer who produce the end product. Will be in between there, to easy their uh, cash flow, easy their financial need. So to support more and more manufacturing sector to come up in the market. The government has an ambitious plan to boost uh, manufacturing in the country. They are also looking at housing as a key pillar of uh, the president's uh, agenda. Uh, as NBV, what opportunities do you foresee? And uh, do you have now the right uh, footing and the right capital base to take on uh, future projects? Yeah, big four agenda means infrastructure, mm -hmm. housing and everything. And where, I have, where our main activity is the steel and the cement. And there is a quite lot uh, in the market. If you can see, there is uh, enough cement producer, mm -hmm. but uh, quite a lot of raw material which is imported. Like in a steel, 100% importation is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, cement is uh, uh, around 50% or 60%, which is the clinker which is import every month. If you can see the statistic, you can get from caps mm -hmm. uh, a lot coming into the country, and uh, where the manufacturer has to create a complete new department for the handling all those. Where NBB come with a solution at a doorstep, and it will uh, reduce their uh, burden in terms of following up the material start from. Uh, Man, uh, manufacture on the other side, importation, uh, clearing at the port and everything. So we add the value to that will come as a supply chain. And uh, by you specifically going into manufacturing, 
uh, how will this uh, boost the business? Because traditionally, like you said, uh, you are in the shoe business. This is more about diversifying for survival and growth. Manufacturing, uh, as our main, as we are coming in mm -hmm. as a trading house, mm -hmm. We support the manufacturer. Yeah. We'll be between the manufacturer and the import. Mm -hmm. So there we position ourselves. All right. Okay. As the need grows, the time, when time comes, we'll see what to do. There is a lot more room in the market. Mm -hmm. It always makes sense when you are, want to come in the market. Like this is a niche market where we are coming. We'll be the uh, probably the first player in the market uh, coming as a, a trading house to provide the solution to the manufacturer. Uh -huh. The same thing we are saying that uh, when demand grows and the market force comes, we have to follow that. Mm -hmm. Maybe from your analysis, I'm sure before you made this decision as a company, as a board, of course, statistics informed the decision towards going towards uh, big on manufacturing. How big is this market? In, if you're to quantify it, what are some of the opportunities even in Africa? Yeah, as you saw, this uh, Africa is a continent of opportunities, uh, economic opportunities. Now, as uh, Kenya and surrounding, they're all growing. And uh, as you look at it, the infrastructure, we have begun to create the infrastructure. And I think that all the governments are doing, uh, putting a lot of pressure on the infrastructure because the need is growing. So. Definitely, as the need and the population is also growing in throughout the Africa, so need is growing day by day. Yeah. All the countries are growing. Mm. It's very unfortunate this COVID because of COVID, we, our growth is restricted. But we always, I think, the surrounding and uh, uh, Kenya, I think we are growing at uh, five, uh, five percent and plus. Mm -hmm. So need is growing. We have enough capacity in Kenya, but it does not stop anybody else to come in. But as demand grow. People have to make their position correctly mm -hmm. and to take charge. But uh, at the moment where we are coming in to support, to be create more productive those manufacturers who are already existing. So we are coming as a link in between at the moment. All right. Yeah. And um, you raised very important aspect uh, there, Chairman. When you look at uh, the recent survey by the Africa Development Bank, they position uh, the deficit we have in infrastructure in the continent stands at about 10 trillion shillings. And uh, the biggest challenge for many companies is, you might have the expertise, but do we have deep enough pockets to finance some of these uh, contracts that you might get in a, in a government or something that you might also bag in the region? I'm looking possibility because the whole world, I is on Africa right now, mm -hmm. because Africa is the future. and. Uh, the most important of our president uh, initiative, build Kenya, by Kenya. I think uh, we all in the same line and uh, we as a business people and business community, we are looking more and more rather than coming, importing, we can try to do, create more local manufacturing to reduce the, our foreign exchange burden. Mm -hmm. And it will help. And I think the whole business community is working day and night for that. As a business veteran, of course, you've been in the industry for several decades. And uh, the other big challenge we continue to face, in, not only in Kenya, but in many African countries, is uh, stable and affordable electricity. And these are some of uh, the issues that continue to affect manufacturers. Perhaps, what are some of the opportunities you see for government to come in and support companies like NBV, and of course, as NBV, what are you doing in regards to sorting out the challenge of power? Because if there's high electricity cost, it is moved on to the consumer at the end of the day. If a bag of cement is going for 500 shillings because of high power costs, it takes it up to about 540 shillings. Of course, it is uh, country to country is a different. Electricity is uh, something can be uh, regulated by the government mm -hmm. and regulatory board. But electricity, uh, the big manufacturers, they always they create their own power by using a coal power, using a coal and as a energy as a coal. Many plants are in the country. And uh, I think we are blessed because of we have geothermal. And uh, 
I think government is doing enough to bring down the cost of that uh, electricity. But there is a, a limit everybody can do. But uh, as a manufacturer and everybody is looking the all possible avenues to how to reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, NBV, as we are talking that uh, we are at the moment coming as a, a link between the manufacturer and so m our main focus will be in beginning will be importation and with time we'll see what is the, how it going so of course as you said the electricity is the main concern mm -hmm. uh, the government is doing enough to reduce the cost of electricity mm -hmm. uh, and i think uh, geothermal is the bless for, uh, blessing for us that our and uh, thermal power we are already having it and i think our power the most important get continuous powers i think we have enough power in kenya in the past couple of years we have increased our capacity earlier right. we used to get from uganda mm -hmm. but i think we have self sufficient now all and right. we are doing extremely well all right and uh, as we come to the tail end of our interview sir i'm also keen to find out from you what do you see in your crystal ball when you look at the future of nbv now that uh, you've had raised additional shares you've injected some uh, serious amount of capital totaling to about 83 million shillings what does the future look like this is an initial uh, investment we did and uh, we are looking the future is very bright mm -hmm. we are all of our experience and expertise for for three decades we are on the continent working uh, regionally we want to bring that onto the nbv and uh, try to make a solid base in trading is not only the trading we are already and we are trying to support so many government initiative like uh, we are already working with this uh, our president as a single use of the plastic bottle we are also going into the mm -hmm. uh, container glass plant very soon we are going to announce so nbv i can say it is we don't want to say everything in the in advance but mm -hmm. we say it's a strong com base mm -hmm. strong company and a bright future mm -hmm. All right. And finally, it would be unfair for me to end this interview without uh, allowing you to also talk to Kenyans in terms of, um, of course, you've been listed at the stock exchange. Um, how has been your experience so far and uh, what are some of the benefits really when you look at uh, from where you are to where you are heading? I can say that uh, NSC was so supportive in our journey from where we started and where we have uh, have a bell ringing ceremony. I urge Kenyans businessmen more and more join on the NSC platform. As an NBV, I can say we want to bring to the public more transparency, good corporate governance. And uh, you can see real time the value of the company. It is a lot more the growth you can achieve from NSC, which you cannot achieve as a private company. The sky is the limit what you can do. I think you can s take an example for first world countries like US, Japan, Far East, India. They are on the sitting on the top list. Why we can in Africa we cannot do. So I think I urge everybody to join this platform and uh, try your luck. I can say that. All right. Try your luck. Join the platform. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Harish Sony, and we wish you the very best. Thank you. That has been Mr. Harish Soni, the chairman of Nairobi Business Ventures, just giving us the lowdown when it comes to the future of the company. He's quite optimistic that the fortunes of the organizations are looking bright and it is time for you as an investor to consider taking up this stock. Speaking about stocks, it's time for us to go to our market analysis and take a look at what the markets are looking like on this day. Time now for market analysis. Where the bell goes, it tells us that the markets have closed. But we're going to have a look at how 
the month of November was as well as we now jump into December, Christmas coming. What are we looking forward to in the markets? And joining us to help us understand this matters is Samuel Gishohi, the head of business development at NCBA Investment Bank. Samuel, welcome. Thank you for having me. So we have just jumped into the new month. I don't know how November was, but what are your general comments in terms of the markets? What did we see over that month? Um, well, uh, traditionally, November and December are slow months. Okay. So we can expect the stagnation to continue. Mm -hmm. um, local retail investors, foreign investors will mm -hmm. most probably be off market. Mm -hmm. Institutional investors will definitely be off market. Okay. Um, so it, it tends to be a very slow month. All right. You can see some of the stocks actually dip during this period, but okay. very low volumes of trading. Okay. Yes. Speaking of which, I, I must probably jump in and ask you, are there sure shares we need to look up to uh, as we come to this holiday season? Well, I, th I think uh, the, the, the idea would be to buy on dip. Mm -hmm. If something you're already holding okay. dips, uh, you'd rather just buy more and wait. Mm -hmm. Because there's very little, when there's low volume, then it means that um, it's not going to really, the price discovery is not very efficient. Mm -hmm. So um, it would just be a good idea to buy them when they dip and wait for January, February. Because okay. then the announcement period starts after December 31st, yeah. all the financials yeah. uh, f financials on the market mm -hmm. and most of the, of the other companies mm -hmm. have their year end, which means between January and March, that's when we are going to see now the activities starting to come. Okay. I think what you need to maybe tell the, the investors out there, yeah. especially the retail, mm -hmm. um, if they were going to sell shares to go for holiday, they would rather have done it in October. <laughs> November, December, Not now. You'd, you'd probably be selling at a loss, so you'd rather just hold them. Okay, so your best yeah. to watch out for that. Speaking of which, we had a lot of announcements happening uh, from some of these big corporates and all, and there was nothing really exciting to take, to, to take home about. Uh, what's your comment on that? Well, it was expected. Mm -hmm. um, you see, for example, all the banks, mm. um, the provisions have gone very high because yeah. of course of the covid issues yeah. uh, with the non-performing loans and the restructuring of the loans yeah. so ideally um, they have to increase their provisions mm -hmm. so that will hit the profit side and so and also the, uh, that that generally even business itself mm -hmm. was was slow so yeah. we did expect to see that dip yeah. um, at least uh, most of them have performed better than their first second and third mm -hmm. uh, you know first and second quarter so yeah. it means that at least We've is seen a, a bit of an, an improvement okay. as the economy starts to pick up. Okay. Um, but I think the markets had already factored that in. Because okay. if you're looking at pre-COVID, the likes of KCB were at 55. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Safaricom, the perennial market beta, mm -hmm. did go down to something like 24 during COVID, but has already recovered. Yeah. So, yeah. It's Would you say it's more like a wake-up call as well to investors to always diversify even within the market? Because I'm saying this because when you look at a company like Kenjin, at least they did very well uh, despite the situation we're in. So I think it's a call to diversify any time you're investing, is it? True, absolutely. Um, and that, that, you see, we have different types of stocks on the market. Yeah. There are those that we call defensive. Yeah. And Kenjin would fall under the defensive side because right. energy mm -hmm. will be consumed whether or not the economy is good. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, of course, the amount of energy consumed will decline probably if the manufacturing base mm -hmm. has been hit by that. Yeah. You know, your manufacturing less mm -hmm. but generally uh, mm -hmm. energy will be used more mm -hmm. um, so you'll find that those are defensive okay. um, a lot of some of the manufacturers manufacturers with mm -hmm. very big market share mm -hmm. will also tend to be defensive mm -hmm. so and then you have the growth ones which will fluctuate quite a bit and you have the cyclical ones which <laughs> you know are all over the place okay well noted let's get to the numbers now the index is almost stagnating week on week any comment on that um, once again, it's November, December. Okay. Um, we are not expecting much activity. All right. Of course, uh, you never know with markets. I mean, when you think about it, you, yeah. you never know. I mean, when COVID came, that mm -hmm. was when we expected the market to be doing the best. Yeah. Um, so something can happen, an outlier, you mm -hmm. know, an unexpected event. Mm -hmm. But generally, we, we expect um, traditionally November and December to be, people are focused on holidays. So not much happens. On You're right, because indeed between uh, the entire month, 2nd November to 30th November, it only moved by 3.15%. Thanks for that, Gishohi. Let's go to the top gainers this week. And there is an interesting uh, rise here with Nairobi Business Ventures, a hoping 649% increase. My goodness. What's your comment on this, sir? 
Uh, well, for such an increase to happen, yeah. then naturally there has to have been a material announcement. Yeah. A material announcement means uh, either they announce something to do with something that would significantly affect the share price. Absolutely. And in the case of the Robbie business, NBV, mm -hmm. um, they, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a shareholder who has uh, Delta, I think, who yeah. have come in and pumped in, uh, you know, more capital. More, more capital. And of yes. course, they've created new shares, which means that this for investors will be a signal of better times to come. Mm. Um, they're looking to go into infrastructure and, uh, you know, manufacturing diversify, for, yes. and to diversify their product really okay. so i think that is a that is a good uh, you know uh, signal to investors okay. uh, and once they hear that it's being bought out then naturally there are people who want to take positions <laughs> in there so uh, that is because of the material announcement it means that the share is allowed to move more than the 10 percent yeah. remember there's a 10 percent cap yeah. up and down mm -hmm. on, on a daily basis. Okay. So for a share to do 600%, My then goodness. that definitely <laughs> means that uh, the shareholders have taken that change very okay. well. Okay, yes. great. Top losers, we see the lead in is KPLC, then followed by Standard Group. One comment, I know you don't have much to say about um, this. Well, looking at the companies, even on both the top losers and the top gainers, yeah. you'll notice they're not very... Um, they're not part of the usual suspects, you know, the bigger movers. Mm -hmm. So that just points again to the stagnation. That now you're just seeing the smaller companies. Okay. KPLC is not a small company per yeah. se, yeah. Um, but KPLC has had their issues. Of mm -hmm. course, now we are, we are seeing, um, and you see in from news, whatever is out in the public mm -hmm. will tend to affect you okay. know, a share. So whenever there are scandals mm -hmm. or there is an issue, for example, now we are uh, with solar, we are hearing solar is taking quite a big of, bit of a chunk of that. Yeah. We've heard them saying that they're increasing the power, mm -hmm. uh, power, power tariffs, uh, yeah. you know, cost of power. Mm -hmm. So all these things will tend to also affect okay. the outlook of an investor. So okay. that could probably be just some speculative behavior. All right, many thanks, Samuel Gishohi, for those insightful uh, comments on the numbers and how they're doing. Time now for Markets 101. All right, on Markets 101 today, we want to understand the difference between how a pyramid scheme works and the stock market works. Is there any difference? A uh, huge difference. Okay. Interesting question there. <laughs> um, yeah, um, uh, you see, a pyramid scheme, mm -hmm. um, by definition, mm -hmm. is, a, is an investment where you, there's no actual underlying asset that you're buying. Okay. So you're really buying air. Um, and usually you'll find there's usually an element of, um, of network selling. Mm, yeah. In which case I come and tell you that I'm selling something mm -hmm. and you're going to make a big percentage. Mm -hmm. One other thing about a pyramid scheme, you'll be promised a very big return. Always good returns. <laughs> yeah, that's the hook. Yes. And then you will sell it to someone else. So the assumption is I'll sell it to you. Mm -hmm. You will sell it to two people. Yes. And you'll gain from selling to those two people. Yeah. Those two people will sell to another two people. Each two. So you can see the pyramid is growing. Yeah. <laughs> now what happens with the pyramid scheme is because there is nothing really being sold. Yeah. It relies on more people coming in. Yeah. So the more money coming in pays the people at the top. So the only people who are gaining are the people at the top. At the top. And then once there's not enough coming in from the bottom, yeah. then, cha then what will happen is money stops flowing upwards yes. and then people start opting out yeah. and it will crash, crumble. Oh. Because then you don't have money to pay. Okay. Um, when you're talking about a stock market or a securities market, yes. it means there's an underlying security. There's mm -hmm. something you're actually buying. Okay. So in the, in the case of shares, you're mm -hmm. buying a share. Yeah. You're buying a part of that company, mm -hmm. a part of ownership of that company. Right. So your returns and your ownership uh, your returns will come from the profitability of that company. Okay. Of course, losses can come because a company can lose money. Mm -hmm. A company can gain money. So yeah. you can make losses, you can make gains, but you're an owner of the company. So, so something whatever real, happens, something tangible. Yes. So unless, say, that company folds, mm -hmm. and you see if it folds, it means the shareholder in the pecking order is at the bottom of the pyramid yeah. because you're the owner of the company. Okay. It means that... You're the one who pays for all the liabilities. Okay. Meaning you can lose your money, yes, if the company, you know, falls or goes, becomes technically insolvent and mm -hmm. then you have to pay the debt. Mm -hmm. But the company, because it's limited, it yeah. doesn't come to directly to your pocket. All right. So again, um, the fact that there's an underlying asset, it means you have something you can go and check and yeah. see that the company is there, they are still manufacturing bread or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, I must say many Kenyans have fallen prey to these pyramids, is it? Greed. <laughs> <laughs> Greed, because you see, if you come to the stock market, yeah. we cannot guarantee you a return. 
Oh, yeah. A company can make a profit or make a loss. Yeah. Uh, most other investments, that's the case. Yeah. But if somebody is promising you and telling you, we are giving you 50%, uh -huh. you know, in a very short period, okay. then naturally people's greed takes over. <laughs> and and usually they'll tell you, I have already made my 50%. All right. So you assume that because I made, mm -hmm. then you'll make it. In, well, I'm actually making from the fact that you're giving me money. So the call to action is don't be greedy. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. If it's too good, think twice. All right, up next is question time. My favorite part, Isabel is asking, how do I identify companies that pay dividends? How do I identify companies that pay dividends? Well, um, I think uh, one of the ways to do that is companies have a dividend policy. Mm -hmm. um, and also they will, they have, they will, you look for companies that have consistently paid dividends in the past. Okay. Um, one of the things that can probably give you a pointer as to which companies are more likely to pay dividends, mm -hmm. one is their profitability, mm -hmm. if they're very profitable companies. Yes. Two is if they're defensive. Remember I said defensive earlier. Absolutely. Some of the, some, one of the things that makes a company defensive is when it has already gotten the market share. So chances are it's not really growing anymore. Okay. And if it's growing, it's not growing much, mm -hmm. it means that now they're not doing much with their profits. Yeah. So chances are they will distribute the profits. Okay. If the company is really growing, mm -hmm. uh, then chances are they will want to withhold the profits for expansion. So that company will probably give you a bonus mm -hmm. so that they can keep the money to open the new branches. If okay. it's, say it's new factories or new branches. Okay. So again, remember a bonus is also a form of a dividend. Absolutely. So again, you just need to look at um, those past dividends. It okay. also tells you it's, there's a chance they'll continue to pay. Mm -hmm. um, look at their profitability because then if profitability goes, you notice some big dividend pairs did not pay this year because mm -hmm. of profitability okay. being affected by... COVID. COVID-19. So again, that's one of the pointers. All right. There you go, Isabel. So I think the point for her is do your research. Of course, of course. Look <laughs> at the past. All right. There you have it uh, for the question of the week. And I hope that Isabel has been sufficiently answered. Right about now, it's time for the historical fact for this week. That's it from us right here on the Trading Bell Show for this week. Many thanks, Samuel, for coming through and helping us with the numbers. You're welcome. It's always my pleasure. Great. And uh, just to remind you, you can always interact with us on the social media handles appearing at the bottom end of your screen because we'd like to hear from you as well. Ask whatever questions you may have and be right here to answer them. I want to end with this note, as Samuel has put it. If the deal is too good, think twice. So don't just jump in, do your research, don't be greedy. See you. Till next week.